We in Baya are in a comparably unusual situation regarding biologic development because uh, we have in reality started with these fed batch based uh, monoclonal antibody development about seven, eight years ago when our company decided to redirect their research and we had a biological strategy and with that we focus now after being more or less, I think, one of the best perfusion companies for mammalian cell culture and also very uh, experienced in microbial protein production of biotherapeutics, we are now moving into this field of uh, these uh, fat batch based biologics. With that said, we are in reality in a comparably good situation regarding infrastructure because we do not have all these very expensive steel temples from small to large and with that regarding new technology developments I think we have more flexibility than others and what I will do in the next 20 minutes I will show you how we try to integrate what's coming up particularly the aspect of disposables but also in combination with the new trends in facilities so this is what I, it's what I will talk about. First, I give you an overview about our group, the biotech development within Bayer. Then I will talk about application of single-use technologies and mainly use and limitations of disposables because they are also, at least for a manufacturing point of view, severe limitations. I will focus on the core in disposable biotherapeutic uh, production and these are the fermenters and then I will come to that to facility setup so comparing hard pipe versus disposable based production facilities and there's this standard what we do nowadays have and which is already pretty much implemented this is disposable based flex facilities and then something which is quite new and quite exciting and this is uh, what we call now bore room concept facilities this is our global biologics organization. In reality, we have two centers. One is in Berkeley, California, and one is in Wuppertal, Germany, where I come from. If you look at the key capabilities of our groups in process, uh, process development, uh, in reality, Berkeley has been the center for perfusion culture, but nowadays we do all, everything the complete infrastructure generation of mammalian cells and MCBs. We have perfusion fermentation and we are also building out their batch fermentation. We have fill freeze, fill freeze drying there and others. And from the GMP manufacturing point of view, we are by far the largest perfusion producer in the world. We turn around about four to five million liters of uh, harvest per year. We have the associated purification capabilities, fill, freeze, dry, and so on and so forth. In Wuppertal, we are a bit different. There we have the mammalian batch fermentation. We are in reality now the original center for fed batch cultivation of mammalian, and we are the center for microbial fermentation development. So our uh, scale currently is 800 liter disposables. We can also do perfusion fermentation. We have a very huge unit for microbial, up to 30 cubic meters, and in reality, uh, everything else. What is important for us, we have now established the infrastructure for what we call pre-POC. That means up to phase one and two clinical trials, and we are currently building out there a phase three pilot facility. Now let me come to applications of single-use technologies. What is the impact of disposables on protein production? We know that, or we believe that almost the complete production process for biologics can be done in disposables, but there are a few steps like these which still need fixed installed or non-disposable equipment simps to make that disposable would be at least a larger scale much too expensive. The following unit operations are available as disposables, mixing, holding, distribution of media and buffers, seed expansion, production fermentation, 
cell removal by depth filtration. We have pre-packed chromatography columns or, or already nowadays, and then up to a certain scale, of course, UFDF and virus filtration. What the problem is at this point of time in development a bit is that there are these different vendors and they all have their own systems. So they have different hookup and connection systems, which often results in custom made and with that currently at least a very expensive solution. Here you see, in reality, we have, by the way, implemented disposable already in 1988 for factor eight, and this is mainly for using it as medium supply container and harvest containers. Uh, what are the limitations in disposal? This is in reality, which is not that much talked about. I told you already that we have these different units from different vendors where we have really a lack of standardization and we hope that the suppliers, Uwe belongs here to one of them, will wor really work on that, that we have uh, their better utilization also between vendors. Then for manufacturing, you need this famous second supplier concept, in particular if you have validated one disposable fermenter, you cannot of course uh, without comparability exchange it by a second. So the issue is really that we rely on one supplier only. What is still lacking and what we would like to have if this becomes more routine is validation packages like for extractables or leachables and regulatory support files and then of course uh, the routine production control measure with disposables is also different because if you compare that to these hard pipe fully automated facilities their human error is pretty much excluded whereas here all these assemblies has to be done by people and if they are not very well trained this is prone for error the key of this disposable fermentation is of course uh, the disposable production are of course the fermenters the sob single use bioreactors and there, in reality, there has been pretty good uh, progress in the last time. There are several systems currently available. Most using agitated sparge bags, mimicking these deep tank production fermenter setup, which, by the way, for me is not so intelligent because if you are, I'm always a bit concerned if you sparge in a closed bag because if this thing clocks, you will get a real disaster. On the other hand, there are other systems which are much simpler, such as WAVE, but they are mostly, not mainly, but mostly used for pre-cultures. And the current established scale for these disposables is up to 2,000 liters, and in reality, we expect that we maybe come up to 3,000. Okay, where do we use these SOBs during development? As I said, in the development, uh, timeline you have this famous pre-POC development this is phase one two where by the way the attrition rate for biologics is also very high so about 80 percent that means only one out of five projects will in average go to the next stage which is the post-POC phase which is then phase three and for that the efforts that companies like us are doing for in the pre-POC phase are the ultimate minimal approach and their disposables are very permanent. So there, uh, for phase three, uh, the use of the larger uh, disposable fermenters is also possible for phase three clinicals, but you have then from then on the potential issue of this famous biochemical comparability up to upon transfer to your final scale which uh, then can be up to the 25,000 liter scale and commercial use may also be possible but then only for low volume products or the other option that is also being pursued is parallel operation of several SOBs but with that you increase of course the labor again so here is an example of a current disposable-based fed veg process that we use for pre-POC, for example, in Berkeley. So you have the typical seed train expansion, starting from a cryovial shaker flask, then a 200-liter disposable up to a 1,000-liter disposable, and then the cell separation is done by dead-end filtration. And you see for that you really do not need any hard piping. 
what are the current systems on the market, agitated Schwarz SOVs. I don't want to go into that detail. This is Accelerex. This has this type of impeller with the sparger here. We have the ATM ISAP. It is a combination. It has a certain, uh, again, peddler, so not an agitator, but more a peddler. We have the high clone SOB with also this agitation in. It is also sparge. And then from Zartorius, we have the SDR sub with these type of impellers and also spargers. We have also working on our own SOB, which is done by our uh, biotechnology service group, which is our uh, yeah, technology ex center of excellence, if you want. And this is a system which I like very much because it simply rotates back and forth, back and forth. So the mixing is sparging is rotary oscillation. The aeration is there only by surface aeration in this cubical bag design. And in reality, the advantages are that we have no moving parts, no sparging. We have excellent aeration and mixing. And we have on top of that a closed system in the housing. So if you have a leak, then you can contain it. And we have also less scale upsets because here you can start such a bag with only 10% of your operation volume. So less scale up steps and uh, we have shown that there is linear scalability and also product comparability for several antibodies and antibody derivatives. So in reality, I like the system very much because it is really simple. Okay, with that, I come now to the production facilities that we have and which are of course influenced if you build now no, uh, now new for a certain small scale there it is different to these old-fashioned hard pipe facilities which are at small scale available but then also at large scale and uh, why has that changed in reality? There is, uh, on one hand, impact of personalized medicine and also high titer that we nowadays get with these new antibody expression systems of up to, let's say, 8 to 10 grams per liter. This has uh, some impact, so high fermentation productivity reduces the number of total fermentation volume, obviously. Uh, to accommodate the market demand for one singular product and on top of that we have the uh, the situation from coming from personalized medicine that we have more diverse products for specific individual patient populations which uh, are identified by biomarkers so within a cancer group like prostate cancer there may be different types which you have to identify and this will lead in combination with these high expression yields to smaller market size for individual products and then of course for different meaning smaller manufacturing plant setups. And as a conclusion, there are nowadays small scale, flexible, mostly disposable based plants with the following features. We have only short production campaigns. We can turn over from product to product very fast. We can, and this is also very important, we can have a regional production setup because when you have disposable fermenters, you can transfer your process identical from an equipment point of view from one side to the other. If you have steel tanks, as we heard in this conference, they are always different. That, uh, and then we have, of course, uh, lower cost of goods. What? Yeah, what is also new in, in mammalian production manu in, in, uh, in uh, manufacturing is uh, this, what we call this functionally closed system. So upstream and downstream, we have more experience and we, are, we get completely or functionally closed systems, which are again based mainly on disposable completely closed system means that they are closed per se, like some of these hard pipe connections functionally closed, that means you prepare them and after you have prepared them, they are functionally closed until the end of operation. And there, the goal in reality is to produce several products in parallel. 
That, and uh, in addition to what we mostly have, and this is this campaign mode, so one product at a certain time period in one manufacturing suite, it will reduce HVAC segregation requirements. This is the, in reality, the ultimate goal. And uh, what is obvious is, is the reduction in SIP, steam in place, and clean in place operations. And they are faster and inexpensive to build. In reality, we have a very, how do you say that, established uh, already these type of plants uh, in where the single use plants are in reality from a containment concept. That means HVAC and segregation and uh, not different to the classical. And that means we have the same segregation, airlocks, we have the same room classification, maybe gowning and dedicated equipment and dedicated personnel. As we have in uh, the classical plants, we can, on the other hand, simplif simplify the processing by replacing these highly controlled, highly automated hard piped uh, setup facilities and also utilities by these disposables. And the main advantages here are is uh, that the plant design and construction is easier, faster, is less expensive and less complex. Because of time, I cannot give you as a really figure, but there are some impressive data. And you can, on the other hand, construct then a comparably large manufacturing operation in a lab-like environment. So you do not need these huge hallways, but in a GMP lab environment, normal room height of a lab, of course, with the corresponding HVAC, you can build that. And, and this is, of course, very inexpensive. Plant qualification and validation is faster. And the plant operation overall is very cost efficient. You have the main savings in utility, water, steam, CLP, SLP. And a very, very important point is less depreciation. Because, for example, you can say that you depreciate a plant investment in average over 10 years. And if a large facility hard pipe costs 100 million more, that means you have 10 million per year only depreciation, and for 10 million, I can tell you, you can buy a lot of plastic bags. And we have faster product change over lower cost of goods. Okay, what is uh, in such a setup the main disadvantages of single use? We have only limited size of operation because bags cannot be 10,000 liter or something like that. We believe that at the 3,000 liter range, it will be uh, the limit. The operation here is, of course, as I said before, labor intensive because we have many manual operations. And with that, we have always to consider that we may get operator failures. And as I said also, is we depend on the bag vendor quality. And this is something which still needs to improve. I was, what was it, two weeks ago, in the cell culture world, and there we had a case study of 1,000 liter fermenters, and somebody from another company told us that they had five trials with 1,000 liter fermenters, and three didn't work because they broke or they were unsterile. And this is, of course, for a manufacturing situation, completely unacceptable. And then we have, of course, the usual, what is always discussed in the context of disposables, more waste. In reality, new plants like our new pilot facility are often constructed as these mixed mode plants combining disposable and hard pipe processing stuff. The new, really new, and to a certain extent revolutionary uh, idea is what we call the ballroom plant design concept. And this represents a new concept which should enable parallel processing of different products in the same low classification containment and maybe even without a segregation in upstream and downstream. And this concept was addressed in this paper. Yeah, and if you are interested, look at that. That is really interesting to read. And uh, the key assumption are here that in reality, it's not only bags, but technical advances, including the single use systems, have continuously reduced the risk of environmental impact on processing. And the segregation that we have, the reason for that is, of course, uh, 
the uh, environmental impact. And most steps can be securely performed, closed, or as I said, functionally closed. And there are, there may be still some few remaining open processes, processing steps, and this has to be addressed independently. For example, you can use portable laminar flow hoods, or what's also quite famous, there is isolator technology. And the basic think thinking is that a closed or functionally closed system, that the process stream is isolated from the environment. The remaining open operations, cell expansion, column packing, powder additions, for example, have to be addressed separately. This could be done in small areas with the classical containment. Potential breach of the closed system is, of course, the major risk, and this has to be addressed. Uh, you have to show or prove that no contamination or cross-contamination occurs during operation, and you need with that an intense microbial monitor. So from a control point of view, this is not trivial. And uh, maintaining the closed system status has been addressed in this case study by a risk-based approach with appropriate risk mitigation strategies, strategies considering each process step or operation. And to my surprise, in reality, there are already the first facilities in the US which were designed, built, uh, according to this concept of risk-mitigated closed systems, which have not no containment, but a much lower containment and rules classification requirement. They are uh, licensed by regulatory agencies, including the, as we know, comparably, how do you say that, conservative FDA. Okay, with that, I only want to give you a very short thing where I would cons what I would consider the perfect upstream process. You can prepare the working cell back in bags instead of ampules. And you can use these bags to directly inoculate a disposable small-scale culture system. Then you scale that up in disposable bioreactors with minimal expansion sets. And up to 10 to 3,000 liters, you can use a disposable production bioreactor for fat batch culture. And the harvest is done in the same size bag using disposable depth filters. And if this is done completely closed, this should be doable in an unclassified environment. With that, I come to the conclusions. Single-use technologies are maturing, allowing to produce most cell culture process steps in disposables instead of hard pipe. Simpler operation in a lab-like environment. The issue is their standardization and regulatory support files for the disposables. Disposable-based flex facilities with functionally closed operation units are in reality uh, or now already an alternative or a better set, a supplement to the standard hard pipe facilities for lower volume products, faster to build, smaller footprint, less complex in engineering. And, uh, but they, the most of them still have this similar containment and segregation concept. And now the hottest on the wire are these ballroom plant concepts with less or no segregation and containment. This seems for sure technically possible if you have addressed or the corresponding risk mitigation and then we could operate different products at a time. We would not necessarily need segregation upstream, downstream. Again, the issue there is if there are still steps which need, which are not being done in functionally closed systems, how do you approach that? And after all, it will also be an issue of regulatory acceptance. And my final slide is my hometown, Wuppertal. This is very famous. That's the Schwebebahn. You may ask yourself, why is that hanging up? And I tell you, Wuppertal is the most rainiest city in Germany, and you wouldn't see it. We took the one day in the year where the sun was shining, and therefore we hang it up. And if you come to Wuppertal, drive the Schwebebahn, you will never forget it. Thank you.